a lot of times we, we're looking for God's word. We're, we're waiting for him to talk to us. Uh, in, in the Bible, in First Kings, I believe it is, Elijah was kind of running from the mountain where he had just done battle with the prophets. It says that he was standing there and he heard an earthquake and that wasn't God. And then he heard this great wind go by and oh, that, that wasn't God either. And all these things were happening around him. And he's like, well, when is God going to talk to me? Right? The Bible says it got quiet. Like you can't even hear a whisper. And then he realized God was talking to him. I was born in Texas. Uh, my grandfather ran a small farm, so it was a lot of get up early, do chores, go to school, come back, do more chores. So I went to church quite frequently, uh, but never really had, uh, you know, uh, understood what a relationship with Christ was. My grandparents were pretty convinced I was going to college. Uh, one of the ways to help uh, pay for college was the Navy. And so the Navy offered what was called a, a partial scholarship, so I took that. Uh, once I was in there, I kind of gravitated to that kind of lifestyle, and you know, there was a lot of discipline, which I was very familiar with. Growing up, I, we didn't fly a lot of places. Uh, we, if we went somewhere, we drove. <laughs> That's just how it was. I never flown in my life. Uh, in my second year of uh, Navy ROTC at Rice University, I got to go on a, an S3 Viking, which was a Navy twin engine jet. Of those two weeks I was flying, you know, just the smell of the jet fuel, the guys walking around in their flight suits, uh, strapping on an airplane and, get, and being able to fly. And you go out and do really cool missions and come back. And that's when I knew I wanted to fly. It's a feeling of exhilaration. Uh, so at that point in time, I, uh, my wife and me had uh, two children and it was a lot of separation. As, as much fun as flying was, as much fun as the Navy was, you know, you, you, you don't get to see family a whole lot. That's when I, I realized that I'd be leaving the Navy. But God was always there. Uh, you know, uh, God took care of my family. Uh, we, were, we, we came back to our home church, which was very comforting. I, I'm convinced God put a pastor in that, in that, uh, at that church at the time who was a retired Army Colonel Chaplain. Uh, my pastor uh, told me about Promise Keepers and said, well, I want you to come with us on a bus for a 30-something hour trip to Washington, D.C., and we're going to go to a Promise Keeper rally called Stand in the Gap. And there were several hundred thousand men. We couldn't even get as close as the Washington Monument, and they were on the Capitol. Uh, whenever they started, uh, it got quiet. And Washington, D.C. is a very busy city. And it was a Saturday morning, my recollection, and it was just quiet. And a speaker after speaker would speak, and there would be uh, um, great men who sang songs, and, and you listen to these guys singing, and you know it was it was a special time. And then there was this one uh, pastor got there, named Dr. Tony Evans, and when he started speaking, it was just a, an amazing uh, uh, message he brought. In a messed up state that will reside in a messed up country that will bring about a messed up world. So if we want better worlds composed of better countries inhabited by better states made up of better counties that are composed of better cities inhabited by better neighborhoods illumined by better churches made up of better families, we better go home better men. It starts with our own commitment to be men of God. And this might be a glimpse of what it's like in heaven. You just you stand around, you're 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 hearing God's word being spoken, and you get to hear you're singing. And then there's times of prayer, and, and it's just quiet and still. And it was just amazing when the, uh, when they called us to pray, how quiet it would get. Uh, what I really realized was that God was giving me an opportunity to serve in His church, and to uh, to He was giving me an invitation, and He always had been giving me an invitation to uh, you know, be a worker in His kingdom. I think the thing my wife and me did right was we did raise our children in church, and we did. We did uh, make going to church a priority. My wife and me were very good about teaching them that. It's for them now to write their own story. It's for them now to, to go make their mark in the world. It's for them to go determine who they want to be. Uh, but we gave them the foundation, and, and we, uh, we, we taught them the Bible. We taught them the love of God, and we have taught them the importance of corporate worship and private worship and prayer and, and being there for people. And if you say you're going to do something, go do it. Uh, but that's up to them now to go to go uh, take what we've taught them and uh, you know take that forward and teach it to their kids. That promise keeper 
experience with something like that, you know. Uh, so yeah, I, as far as legacies, don't really care that people know I'm a pilot. Don't really care that they know I run a lot. It's really more important about my kids and, and the life they're going to live. <laughs>